The Earth exerts a pull on objects, which we call gravity. If you let the object go, the Earth pulls on it. That exerts a force and causes it to accelerate. For a moment, I want to pretend that I don't know very much about this force of gravity. That is to say, I don't know what it depends upon. I don't know what makes it stronger or weaker. And I want to do some experiments to see if I can discover something about the force of gravity, what it depends upon. Now, it could depend on a lot of things. It might depend on the color of the object. It might depend on whether the object is moving or not. It might depend on a lot of things. And in the interest of time, I've got to pretend that I've eliminated a lot of those possibilities, and I've narrowed it down to two things that the force of gravity might depend upon. And now I want to do some experiments, a series of experiments, to see if I can decide how it depends on these two things. And the two things that I've narrowed it down to are the mass of the objects, or the mass of the object being attracted by the Earth, and the distance between the Earth and the object, which is measured conveniently from the center of the Earth to the center of the object. Now, if it could depend upon two things, I have to be systematic. That is, I have to hold one of the things constant while I see how the force of gravity depends on the other variable which I allow to change. So for the moment, I'm going to concentrate on the dependence, the force of gravity, on the masses of the objects that are attracted or pulled by the Earth. To do that, I'm going to fix the distance between the objects and the center of the Earth. Now, the, uh, the, uh, the method in my, in my uh, madness here is to do the following thing. I want to look at the motions of certain objects, the motions that they have when the force of gravity is an accelerating force on them, the only significant accelerating force on them. And looking at the objects to see how they accelerate, I'm then going to try to work backwards to decide how the force of gravity depends on things like the mass or the distances between the objects. So, let's hold the distance between the objects constant. Now, the objects I'm going to look at actually are going to fall, and of course, as they fall, the distance between the objects, in fact, changes. But the distance is measured from the center of the Earth to the center of the object. The center of the object is the center of the book, it's about um, 4,000 miles to the center of the Earth. Consequently, if I let this object fall just a very short distance, like a few feet, the distance between the objects is essentially held constant at that 4,000 miles. It varies so very little that any difference in the, in the uh, distance because of this short fall make, could make no difference at all. So, to that degree, I've held the distance to the center of the Earth constant, and now I want to consider the way that two objects of quite different mass um, respond under the influence of the force of gravity. So I'm going to let the Earth pull on these two objects and let them fall. Now the first thing that uh, strikes my uh, attention, in fact, the one kind of waves back and forth as it moves downward. Now, what is it that's, that's causing that thing to kind of move back and forth that way? It's undoubtedly the uh, friction that it experiences as it encounters the air in the room. The air is exerting a force on this object, and we'd have to conclude that that force exerted by the air is a significant one in determining the motion. Now, the thing that I wanted to do was to see how objects moved when the only significant force was the force of gravity. But if I have a second significant force acting on the piece of paper, that destroys my ability to see how gravity itself uh, affects the motion. So I'm going to have to restrict myself in these little experiments that I'm going to do to situations where I believe that any force of friction is insignificant. If I drop the book, there's undoubtedly some kind of air friction there, but it's insignificant. The significant force causing the acceleration downward is just the force of gravity.
Galileo is said to have done an experiment at the uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa where he dropped two objects of quite different mass from the tower and observed, somewhat to everybody's surprise perhaps, that they both hit the ground at the same time. When we try this experiment with a piece of paper and a book, which are of quite different masses, we find that the paper moves sideways like this because the air friction is a significant force on the piece of paper. What we want to know is what do the two objects do if gravity, the single force of gravity, is the only significant accelerating force. Now, if air friction is a problem, you can fix that in the following way. If you put the paper on top of the book and allow the book then to run interference for the piece of paper so that the air friction on the piece of paper is now insignificant, then you observe that both of the objects hit the ground at the same time, which is to say both of the objects accelerate downward with exactly the same acceleration which does not depend upon the mass, since they have quite different masses. 